What do we want? Justice! My name is Cindy Galvis from Press Pass TV, and I am currently on site at Gordon Park. Youth United will never be defeated! We are the youngins who have given hammers to our homes. Have you forgotten your heart? This is part of a continued struggle to end police brutality and also to get transparency from the Boston Police Department. The beginning of Press Pass TV as an organization brings us back to 2008. One of the things that my students would always talk to me about was how they saw their community represented in the news and that this basically amounted to them wanting to, when they were old enough, leave the community that they lived in. So when I started Press Pass TV 10 years ago, I really wanted to change the narrative that was being constructed through a lot of uh, the network news and the newspapers. We worked with a group of six youth in what we then called the Freelance Program. One of the things I thought we could accomplish is that if we introduced the young people to the entrepreneurs, uh, the artists, the change makers in the community, that the young people could be plugged into and be inspired by these individuals and that they could see the opportunity. The first group that we worked with really showed to us that, that we could make this work and that we could keep growing. MCAS results have a high correlation with family income. Why do you think low income communities are unfairly affected? I always saw Press Pass as more than just your average, you know, youth um, organization teaching kids a skill. It was really about taking a holistic approach. I mean, even when Joanna and Kara were a part of the Accelerator program and we were going through the financial class and it was really difficult um, for a lot of people to get out of the scarcity mentality. And Joanna, along with Kara, stood up and said there is trauma with money and let's talk about it. It's just that type of authenticity that I think it really sets TCP apart. And then that built up to us applying for the Social Innovation Forum in 2014. Thank you, Tanya. Do you remember your first job? Well, at 15, I interviewed for my first job ever. It was for the inaugural Media Leadership Institute at Press Pass TV, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into, or that years later I would stand in front of you as its community relations manager. When they told me that I was going to be giving the pitch, I was furious. I was furious. Furious, not furious. excited, not, uh, probably scared. Exci <laughs> that, that, I love that mix of excited and scared together, because that usually means there's a lot of growth. I had to lean into the discomfort of really opening up some of the most intricate and intimate parts of myself to really put on for a group of, what, 300 <laughs> impact investors? <laughs> yeah, yeah who had never members. heard about Press Pass and what you did before at all. But at Press Pass, we see caring, resourceful innovators with the potential to interrupt generational cycles of poverty. We see opportunity for us all. That was the essence. That still is the essence of what the Transformative Culture Project does. Um, as I think about the ways in which the program has grown, how Press Pass TV was not the right name or fit for the work that we were doing. And really looking at what ways we had changed and grown since we started as Press Pass TV and what services have been added and what was really our central proposition of change now that helped us get to Transformative Culture Project. Currently, TCP has a myriad of programming to suit either youth or entrepreneurs of color in Boston. So right now we have Beyond Creative, Creative Classrooms, and also Assemble Boss. My name is Matt Feener. I am the production manager at the Transformative Culture Project. And I also lead the Beyond Creative program, which is a media arts agency staffed by youth. We train those youth on site through a multifaceted curriculum that includes technical and job skills training, along with life skill workshops. Our other youth-centric program we have is Creative Classrooms, which connects talented community-based artists to young people in the Boston Public Schools. And that program is uh, managed by Latia. TC Project has brought many great things to Community Academy. I say this wholeheartedly that I feel privileged to have you in the building. Thank you so much for having me, definitely. Thank you. Know, you. I think Community Academy, yeah, that was like one of the first schools. Um, when I kind of put my foot in the teaching artist world. And, and it's really rewarding too to see 
how proud they are of yeah. their work. And also like the songs, you know, when they're in the studio hearing their voice loudly over the speaker, you know, things like that, like the small things, but just seeing that joy is, is something that's really rewarding mm -hmm. to me personally. I think it's really unique that TCP has programming for both youth and entrepreneurs in the city. A lot of times when you see nonprofit programming in the city, it's specifically directed at youth and or young professionals. I think TCP merges the two in a really great way that really highlights the way that creativity can really create new pathways for people. I don't know, there's just so much memory. So I don't even know like where to start, to be honest. Like my first time teaching someone how to use the camera. My first time teaching uh, a youth how to um, edit. I just like seeing that reaction when they're like, look, look what I made. And I'm like, I remember feeling that way. Like, wow, like this is my project. This is my story. So just helping them create that vision. I think that's a important memory to me. Seeing the young people take on these leadership roles within the organization is, I would say, the most rewarding part of this work. What is the one commodity that the U.S. still has to export? And it's our creativity. And that's why I see that you guys are really well poised for that. And I think people are really starting to see how these programs are coming together to create a transformative experience for creative people in Boston. One of the things that TCP has always done is built leadership from the inside. And so I hope the future of TCP are the young people now who are in Beyond Creative, in Creative Classroom, you know, going to assemble, performing, um, take the mantle and take leadership and say, this is how we're going to transform our culture. So, you know, I've had this opportunity with our 10 year anniversary to reflect on what 2008 felt like. And it was this moment where people were feeling really excited and also really terrified. And there was so much uncertainty. And I think that we're in a moment like that again. You know, I don't know that I would have imagined 10 years ago when we were, you know, opening a bank account and getting our 501c3 that I'd still be doing this 10 years later, but I'm so proud of the work that we have done and excited about what is next.